Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Just Open It, the YouTube series in which I open recently acquired toys. My name is Russ. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you're a fan of toys, action figures, or pop culture in general, please subscribe to my channel, Karaoke Fanboy TV. Every week I will open a recently acquired toy or collectible, and today I am opening from Mattel Creations, Rock On, from Masters of the Universe Origins. I'm very excited to open this figure. Um, I believe he's the first in this brand of Mattel creations that I've purchased. I don't remember if Grizzlor or the Frogman were um, marketed under this specific brand, but it seems very online exclusive. It reminds me of Maddie Collector when Masters of the Universe Classics first released. Um, and quite frankly, I'm a little disappointed that this might mean that Masters of the Universe Origins won't be as prominent at retail. I mean, here in Phoenix, you've heard me say this before, the, the pegs have been clogged with the Jitsu, Buzz Off, Sorceress, uh, Sun Man, I think, wave. I, I see those figures everywhere still. I think they were new in 22. <laughs> so um, it's a bummer that distribution just isn't pushing through. So we're getting new product here. Of course, Moss Man. Um, was found here easily in the Phoenix market and is still out there, deeply discounted now. The Talon Fighter um, might have been the last vehicle that went to market. At some targets, there are some Sun Man 3-packs still available. So it's not that Origins isn't still out there and a presence. It's just that new product isn't coming out. So fans like me have to go online, find these offerings from Mattel Creations, and, um, and purchase accordingly. And I'm excited to tear into this beloved character. You can see here, um, cue dramatic box opening music. So they know that this is a moment for sure. Um, I think I'll just use my keys to open this box. So this is going to be a multiple opening, obviously. I have this shipping box, and then I have the package inside. Something that's funny, and I'm going to try to cover the addresses here. It's my work address, but it says label goes here. And the shipping label is down there. So that's just kind of a funny <laughs> uh, misplacement. But getting into this thing, Rock On is, of course, one of the classic characters from Masters of the Universe. One of the stone people that I think in animation appeared more in She-Ra than He-Man, though they were Masters of the Universe proper characters as far as action figure release goes. I could be wrong on that. He-Man fans, correct me in the comments, but just removing some packaging, and here we are. Beautiful. Nothing else in the box. So right away, a couple of prominent differences here. Um, he is packaged in this sleeve, so like the whole package has this protective plastic, um, and I'm wondering how easily he'll just slide out of this. It looks like very easily, actually, preserving the card back art, which is awesome because this is unpunched, and you can see that beautiful card back art that's so indicative of this line. I absolutely love it. They pay, pay homage to the Vintage Masters of the Universe series while creating an identity all their own here, and so that is super cool. Um... I love it. Rock on and Stone Dar versus the, the Evil Horde as it should be. And in fact, if you just watched Masters of the Universe Revolution on Netflix, you saw a face-off between Stone Dar and Hordak. Um, no spoilers here on my part, but looks like a mini-comic is included, which is cool. Uh, the Spear of Eternity. I won't give this uh, a firm flip yet, only to say that the facial expressions of the characters on the cover are odd. That is bizarre to me. Okay, I have to take a quick peek inside to see if the interior art is similar, and it kind of is. Um, I'm curious to know who the creative team is here. And I see they're sticking with the same kind of lettering, which is just so distracting. The font is weird. Um, the lettering placement is odd. There were some comments on my criticism about these mini-comics in past videos, and I just want to say that the mini-comics of the original Masters of the Universe line really built a lot of mythology and 
introduced me to a lot of incredibly influential creators in comics. Bruce Timm, who's one of the minds responsible for Batman the Animated Series. Stan Sakai, the uh, creator of Yusaki Ojimbo, friend of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but a powerhouse in his own right when it comes to small press comics, independent comics. Um, Larry Houston, who was a producer on a lot of beloved 80s animation. Uh, so, and you can follow all the, Larry Houston especially, follow him on Instagram. He's making the con circuit and he's uh, super cool. So, the same amount of work goes into the pages of a mini comic as it might a standard sized comic that you find at a local comic book store, you know, a Batman or a Spider Man comic. It's the same amount of work that goes into these pages as far as your scripting, your penciling, your inking, I presume. There is lettering and, and coloring, some post production. So, I'm just kind of taken aback by, yeah, it's a high quality. I mean, the coloring is beautiful, it pops, but. Um, I just have some issues that maybe I'll dedicate an entire video to at some point, but I do like the ease in which everything has been coming out of the packaging so far. And here he is, the man himself. Look how clean this is. It's just an impressive display. Um, you know, the whole point of just open it is to get rid of the packaging. I want these figures out and on my shelves so, so they can be appreciated as I presume originally intended, as toys were meant to be kind of posed. And, you know, I don't play with them so much as I take some uh, delight in their sculpt and paint application, and then I do pose them and put them on the shelf um, as if they were statuettes, basically. So to have this piece so beautifully intact with the art, you know, unscuffed by retail shelving, you know, hanging from a peg, being, uh, you know, fingered through as, as shoppers look. It's, I'm torn as to whether or not I'll keep that. Here we are. And he is, of course, packaged with this veritable, I don't know why the word souffle of packaging here. So I can't just remove him. I have to kind of... And he did come out easily. You know what? I take that back. It wasn't as difficult as it looked. I still don't know what the purpose of these are. But he is out. And I like this little uh, the gun, too. So, okay. Trash here. Let me get into the figure himself. Boy, does he look cool. Um, I was wondering if he would have arm articulation. Because the whole point of the stone people as action figures. Um, one of their dominant actions would be, and let me see if this is as easy as the original figure was, he becomes, his name is Rockon, he becomes a rock. And his mentor, Stonedar, becomes a, a stone. This is kind of a bizarre look on the back. I don't remember the original action figure from the vintage line being as a cheeky, so to speak, but um, all that said, the fact that he is able to articulate in that way to become the, uh, the stone, and I see, I'm just wondering how this works, The because um, there are elbow joints, and yet the, the pieces of rock prohibit that. Do they come off? Well, there's no instruction. I just looked, I just instinctively looked at the back of that box that I've looked at multiple times already to see there was some direction as to whether or not these pop off. I don't want to force it, so I'm not going to. But um, it is odd to apparently have elbow joints in there, but for not. Maybe after this video, I'll find that you can actually remove these. But for the time being, I'm not going to really force it. Instead, I'm just going to kind of appreciate this figure for what he does have. Articulation-wise, it's pretty standard, you know? I do like the kind of the clicking of the head, which is what the original figures had, too. So even that kind of kinesthetic element to it is, is nostalgic. Um, but at the same time, it's so sharp-looking, so bright and colorful, so cool. Um, his face is expressive. I mean... That's rock on, baby. Rock on. 
Okay, here's where, here's, I don't know, I just figured that out. But the, the forearms twist like that. So I guess that means if he's holding his gun, and how would he do that with, okay, so the wrists turn two. So I could turn the wrist, put the gun in hand. And now he's kind of pointing it kind of gangster style arm like. You know, you want to mess with me, Skeletor, or whatever. So then you take that out of his hand, and it also pops into his chest. And so this becomes kind of this... I don't know what the point of that was. Um, I'm curious what they call that accessory, actually. But there is no distinction here. I just remember it being... Even out as a kid, I thought, well, why, why does this plug into their chest like that? And I wonder if that's for storage's sake too when he's in rock form you could have it attached and then when he springs into his more humanoid form he, it just blasts just boom right out of the chest like that so um all in all super reminiscent of the original and yet offering some the word sharp just keeps coming to mind, and that's not because he's a rock. It's just the sculpting is so on point. The detail is there. You can see that on his chest. It, just the, the kind of the wiring of his armor, if that's meant to be kind of robotic looking or what have you. Um, it's futuristic and yet primal. It, it's everything that Masters of the Universe is. And if Mattel Creations is the only way I can continue to get my hands on these classic characters that I love, hey... So be it. And I will continue to purchase as long as these original vintage characters come out. And some of the newer characters that they're kind of adding on are interesting too. So keeping my eye on those. Please keep your eye on my channel for when I acquire those and open them right here. I appreciate your, uh, your viewership. You know, if you're into this at all, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I do post a little bit more about the toys and comics that I love. And also the toys and zines that I make. I self-publish my own mini comics and zines. You can find me on Instagram at AmazingAZComics. So I'd really appreciate seeing you there. Definitely tune in next time when I grab another unopened toy from the stack here in my living room and I say, you know what? Just open it. I'll catch you next time.